Good morning, my uh, YouTube viewers. It is Crystal here. I'm just here this morning because I wanted to give you a code review on a NumPy neural regression using Boston House Prices. And the, sorry, NumPy Neural Network using Boston House Prices. But this neural network is going to be a regression whereas all of the previous neural networks that I have gone into have been classifications. And the difference between a regression neural network and a classification neural network is the fact that a regression neural network does not have an activation function at the end. And I read that somewhere, but I can't find out where it is that I read it, but that's the main difference between a regression and a classification. And I have used um, Google Colab to make this program. Google Colab is a free online Jupyter notebook hosted by uh, Google. And so it's a great platform to use to write code in Python with the exception of the fact that um, with the section of the fact that it doesn't have a very good undo function. So if you accidentally or inadvertently delete or overwrite any code, the only way that you can get it back is to go into the saved history and see if the old code is in the saved history. So after we have created our Jupyter Notebook, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import our libraries. So we're going to import NumPy, which performs your numerical computations, and it's also going to create your neural network. We're going to import Pentas, which is going to read the Boston House Price data set. And the thing is, is Boston House Price data set is no longer on sklearn and the reason why is because the data set itself had a lot of racist overtones and since the data set had racist overtones i think that they just decided to remove the data set but what they didn't do was they did replace the boston house price data set with another data set such as california house price that's one thing that I'm disappointed in SK Learn about because they took out Boston house prices, but they didn't replace it with something else because you've got California house prices. That would have been a suitable replacement, and they haven't done that. I'm just wondering if there's any way I can write SK Learn people an email and ask them to put California house prices on it. So since Boston House Prices is no longer on SKLearn. We had to use a data set, and I used um, Jason Brownlee's Boston House Price data set. Um, after we've um, imported NumPy, we're going to import Pandas, and that's going to be to um, create data frames and process the data. We're going to import sklearn to provide machine learning functionality. We're going to import Seaborn to visualize the data. And we're going to import Matplotlib to visualize the data as well. So after we have imported our libraries, then what we're going to do is we're going to load the CSV file. And we're going to process the data set. So we're going to use Jason Brownlee's Boston House Price data sets. And um, then we're going to define the columns and then so your x um your x variable is going to be the entire data set except for the last column and your y variable is going to be the last column and then what we're going to do is we're going to convert the x and her y to numpy arrays so and then after that we're going to use sklearn to Scale the data so it's going to be have a mean of zero and a variance of one. 
So after we pretty much pre-processed the data, we're going to analyze the target and we're going to use seed porn to create a histogram of the label. And so you can see this is what the label or the target looks like. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use Escarn to split the X and Y variables into training and testing data sets. And so you can see, we have also printed out the shapes, so you can see what the shapes are. Now what we're going to do is we're going to define the neural network. And so in this regression neural network, we don't have any activation functions. So input size equals x train dot shape 1. Hidden size equals 64. And output size equals 1. So we're going to initialize the weights and the biases for the hidden layer and the output. And your weights and your biases determine the uh, how well the neural network is going to perform. So we set our seed at 42. And then we define the hidden weights, np.random.rend in input size, hidden size. And then we go your hidden bias equals np.0s hidden size. You go output weights equals np.random.rend in hidden size, output size. And output bias equals np.0s output size. And the thing about a neural network is you have an input size, which is your input neurons. And then you have your hidden size, which is your hidden layer. And you have your output size, which is your output layer. So you've got an input layer, a hidden layer, and an output layer. And so the input layer is the number of columns of the data frame. The hidden layer is whatever you want to choose. And um, I put number 64 in there. I experimented with number 64. And then the output size is going to be 1 because it's going to be a regression. And after we have defined our model, now we're going to train the data into the neural network. We're going to set the learning rate up as 0.001. The number of epochs is going to be 5,000. So for epoch in range num epoch, so it's going to iterate 5,000 times, you're going to have your forward propagation, and which is which is going to make your predictions as well in the forward propagation. So you've got hidden layer input, hidden layer output, and your predictions. And then you're going to set up loss is your predictions minus y train dot reshape negative one, one uh, to the power of two. So it's going to be squared. We're going to set up our back propagation. And so that's going to set up your error and help um, make the neural network work better to give it a better accuracy or less noise. And then we're going to update the weights and the biases in the gradient descent. So you're going to have output weights, output bias, hidden weights, hidden bias. And then what we're going to do is we're going to print the loss for every 100 epochs. So you can see that the loss keeps going down for all the epochs. So the loss is 11.6204 when it started out as 240. Now we're going to test the model. So you're going to evaluate the model on the test set. And then you're going to get your predicted prices. And then so I said predict on the predicted prices. And then you're going to calculate the mean squared error on the test. So you're going to find out what the test loss is, which is 17.8925. And you're going to calculate the root mean squared error, which in this instance, the root mean squared error is 11.22. So we uh, made a... Using Matplotlib, I made a graph of the true points against the predicted points. And so you can see that there are some outliers there. 
after we do that, what we're going to do is we're going to compare the regression neural network to SKLearn's neural network. And with SKLearn's neural network, we got an error of 3.78. So SKLearn's neural network seems to work a lot better than uh, the made from scratch neural network. And the reason for that is because when you're dealing with a regression model, you want to have the um, error as low as possible. And so the error is lower in SKLearn's neural network than it is in um, the made from scratch neural network. But it's still a good idea to be making these neural networks and practicing with them and understanding how they work because it will help you move on to other things. And so I used Matplotlib to make a diagram of the uh, actual points against the predicted points. So you can see that it looked very simpler, but SKLearn still worked better than um, the made from scratch neural network. But I wanted to go ahead and do a regression neural network just so you understand how it works. And the main difference between a regression neural network and a classification neural network is that the regression neural network does not have an activation function at the end before it goes to the output. So that's your main difference. So I'm going to go ahead and close this video because I've talked about the neural network, which is what I wanted to do. and um, I'd like to thank all of my subscribers for supporting my channel. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share. And if you want to be notified whenever I make a new video, please tap onto the bell button next to the subscribe button. And thank you very much for watching this video. I look forward to making more videos for you in the future.